Yo, what is going on guys, it's Garth here from Murphy's Film and welcome to my top 5 tips for new film photographers. But first, let's go gig, get a cup of coffee. So for long time viewers of this channel, you will know, yes, I'm no longer on the instant coffee. I'm on the pour over. So for a lot of you guys, it will be like, I have, this is a rejoicement moment. So yes, you've won me over. I am now drinking proper filtered coffee. You guys are welcome. So my first tip for new film shooters is not to get drawn in by the expensive cameras. Go on eBay, you see it a lot on Twitter and Instagram and uh, YouTube and all things like that. You see everyone shooting with Leicas or you see them shooting with Contax T2s, stuff like that, or you see them shooting medium format like this by bad boy, Pentax 67. They're all great cameras, don't get me wrong. But when you're first starting off a film, trust me, you do not need them because, let me show you, I started off with one of these. So this was my first film camera. My first film camera is a Practica MTL3. And you know what? It has a built-in meter, it takes M42 mount lenses, and it's a great solid starter camera. And if you guys are starting out in film, this is what I'd recommend. This kind of not too expensive SLR style camera, because it'll be nice and simple. It'll be a nice easy transition from if you are a digital shooter. Alternatively, if you are a digital shooter and you shoot Canon, for example, you could pick up one of these things. These, this particular model is a Canon EOS 1000F. It's a 35mm SLR, but it looks similar to your standard DSLR, except obviously it takes film at the back. But the advantage of having these one, one of these kind of cameras, is that they are super, super cheap to pick up. I picked this up for about a tenner, and if you're from America, that's about $10. They're super, super cheap and all of your glass that you own will natively go onto this as long as it's an EF mount, which is the mount with the red dot. So if you own any existing Canon lenses and the same goes for Nikon, just I'm not a Nikon shooter, I never shot Nikon, so I can't really help you with that one. But you can pick up these autofocus compatible SLR style cameras and they're great. They're really good fun to shoot with and they're a nice easy transition into film. Highly, highly recommended. So the other thing that I'd recommend if you're starting off a film would be either a nice easy point and shoot. This one I've got is a Pentax PC 35 AF, which nice sharp 35mm f2.8 lens. What can I say? It's a point and shoot. If you're just getting started and you just want to try it out just for the fun and to get the colours or the black and white look of film, start off with a point and shoot. Trust me, it will be plenty enough to get you started. Or if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, go for something like this, which is the Canon AE-1. It's infamous. It's such a, such a good camera. And the lenses that you can get for it, it's brilliant. You can pick up, pick up a Canon AE-1 for about 100, 125 pounds, something like that. And for someone starting off on film, it's got everything you need. It's got automatic shutter priority mode, which I know isn't the favorite. I know a lot of people will say go for a Minolta or like a Minolta X700 because that's got aperture priority. It's just whatever you prefer or whatever you're used to shooting with. If you're coming into film photography, this was my first upgraded camera from the Practica and it's a really, really good starter camera. Highly, highly recommend the Canon 81 if you're starting off a film and you're willing to spend maybe 100, 150 pound. Great camera.
So my second bit of advice would be pick a film stock. What, by this I mean decide if you want to shoot colour or black and white. You see it all the time on Instagram and YouTube and things like that. You see people shooting the expensive films. Don't get me wrong, the expensive films are lovely. But at the price of nearly £10 a roll for a roll of portrait or a roll of cine still, not worth it if you're starting off. So what I'd recommend is decide if you want to be shooting colour or black and white. If you want to be shooting black and white, I've got two recommendations for you. I recommend Ilford HP5 or Kodak Tri-X. These are the two classic films that if you look back throughout history, these are the two that people stick with and because they are most reliable and they can be pushed, pulled and they have a lot of forgiveness in them. By forgiveness, I mean if you miss your exposure by one or two stops, either way, you'll still be able to use the image. And the advantage of shooting black and white to colour is you have the ability to push and pull your film. If you'd like me to talk about pushing and pulling film in another episode let me know and I will explain it in full detail how you do it what it does etc 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 if you want to be shooting color I would recommend something like this this is a three pack of Kodak gold now Kodak gold is a classic looking film if you have family members older family members who used to shoot film guarantee you they have a shot Kodak gold at least once or gold 400 gorgeous gorgeous film gives you that really vintage look but it's still a sharp film so so if you want to be shooting color i recommend something like kodak gold or the alternative if you like the colors of fuji is fuji c200 or fuji superior both really really good films i've shot both tons and absolutely love the results So tip number three is make sure that your film is actually being advanced in the camera. So this would be weird because everything else I've done filming it, but this is a voiceover, so yeah. So every SLR style film camera will open as shown in the video here. So to make sure that your film is advancing, place your film either on the left or on the right. In this instance, the film goes in on the left. Pull it all the way across onto the take-up spool. Some cameras like this one, as you can just about see on the right, have a little slit for the film to go into. So if you can't see the slit or your camera doesn't have one, press the shutter and advance just a little bit so you can actually see if there is a slit or not. If there is, get it to where you can see it by advancing just a little bit and take your film and wind it on. Now this is the super, super important part. Once you've got your film into the little notch bit, is make sure that it's actually advancing and the sprocket, the sprocket teeth, line up with the ones that are inside the camera. As you can see here, the little teeth on the right have actually went into the notches. So, once you know that it's actually winding on, close the back. And what I don't do here is, really what you should do is on the left where you can wind back, where you wind your film back and you pull up. If you bring that backwards so it has tension and then you can see if it does turn that the film is advancing and you're ready to go, ready to shoot. As you can see here, it's turning, ready to go. So tip number four if you are still starting out in film photography is don't be afraid or don't get disheartened if something goes wrong with your first roll of film. I've been shooting film for maybe seven or eight years now and believe it or not I'm only 23. Yes I've been shooting film that long and in this time I've tried out different cameras, I've tried out different films and throughout all of it I have had some mess ups. So don't be afraid to mess up your film your first couple of rolls it doesn't matter if your camera has a light leak that's a different issue but even still if it does have a light leak or you open the back before winding the film back do you know what sometimes if you can shut the back quickly it can result in some pretty cool effects i'll put some pictures up of some of the times that my rolls of film have messed up honestly some of them i really like and some of them i hate but that's the nature of the beast. If you're willing to get into film photography, these are the kind of things that can happen, will happen. And it, I'm not saying that it'll happen on every single roll. It's predominantly down to 
does your camera have a light leak or is that the kind of look you're going for because people do go for this kind of look on purpose it's entirely up to you but point number four don't be afraid to mess up it's nice it's fun it's part of the game so tip number five my last final point is books buy photography books whether you are starting in film photography now if you have been in film photography for ages or if you don't shoot film at all my number one tip for you to grow as a photographer and for your work to skyrocket past all your friends is books i cannot stress this enough by books i don't just mean go out and buy a handbook on how to use your dslr by this i mean study the greats study people like Henri Gautier Brisson, <coughs> Sol Leiter, William Eggleston, Vivian Meyer, Irving Penn, people like that, buy their books. At this point you can go on Amazon and you can buy a huge selection of books, super, super cheap. Also, if people have zines, people you follow on Instagram or on YouTube or anything like that, bring out a zine, that's them showcasing their work. Most of the time it's bits of work that they purposely haven't posted on their Instagram or the YouTube or whatever. So their better way is in the zine for you to buy. Zines and books are a ridiculously good resource and I cannot recommend getting zines and books enough. Let me show you just a couple of what I mean. So this is a book that I picked up for my birthday. This book, the size of it, cost me six pounds off Amazon, which if you're from the UK, you know, that's nothing. That is two meal deals. For the sake of two meal deals, you can get yourself a book from Magnum, which is a collective of photographers, which is brilliant. And let me just show you a couple of the images in this. For example, here's one of my favorite images. You probably can't see it properly. It's by a photographer named Bruce Davidson. And it's of this little guy dressed up as a clown. It's incredible. And you know what? Flick through it. It's not just black and white stuff in here. It's color too. Honestly, buy books. I can't recommend it enough. I'll sh I'll put in a little bit of B-roll here of some of the books that I have got. One of the books that I can recommend the most, especially if you're into shooting colour, is this one by Sol Leiter. It's like a collective of his work, sold on Amazon. I'll put the link below if you're really interested. It cost me less than a tenner, and the size of the book, you can put it in your backpack. The amount of times I've took this on the train, and it doesn't half get you fueled to go shooting books buy books study the greats study your friends who are selling zines study their work you can tell i'm getting excited about these books so anyway guys let me know down in the comments below what you thought of these five top tips for new film photographers if you're a new film photographer if you've been shooting film for a while or if you just thought you'd watch the video just to see what see what i think of, would be some good tips so yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the video. If you have any more tips, drop them down below because I'm sure new people will come to this video. And if you leave some handy tips, not typical YouTube comment tips, yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> if you leave some tips down below, help out, help out the community. It's always good. So, without any further ado, it's been Garth here from Murphy's Film. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. So, more videos coming soon. Speak to you guys later. Peace out.